Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. From websites and online stores, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence. Hello friends and army. As you may have guessed from the title and the thumbnail, today I'll be showing you the process of me painting this screenshot from the Boy With Love music video by BTS featuring Halsey using some jelly gouache. But before we dive into the video, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, Squarespace. As an illustrator and content creator, it's important for me to be able to showcase all the different types of media that I create and have to offer. With Squarespace, I'm able to do just that by being able to implement my YouTube videos, Instagram feed, as well as have a curated gallery to display my best work. I personally am not the most proficient when it comes to web design or coding, but thankfully the website editor on this platform is very intuitive to use and makes it really easy for me to upload new illustrations and rearrange them to my liking. So if you are interested in launching your own website, head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash I'm a wonder for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So personally, I have had this jelly gouache set for a couple of years now. And so over time, it has basically dried out. Thankfully, you can just reactivate the paints with some water, which you'll see I have this little plastic bottle that I use to rehydrate the jelly cups as well as my palette as I work on the painting. And with paint brushes, I'm really not that picky, but generally I would recommend a synthetic nylon brush, which I find is the most versatile. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I will be recreating this screenshot from the music video Boy With Love by BTS featuring Halsey. The screenshot that I picked is from one of the opening sequences that features all of the members. So unfortunately Halsey herself didn't make it into this painting because she wasn't part of this particular setup, but I just wanted to throw that in there that I recognize that she was in this song and this music video. Whenever I begin painting, usually I start out with painting the skin. If you're familiar with my work, you'll know that I predominantly paint portraits and characters, but since the focal point of this piece is the environment rather than the figures, I decided to start out with the lightest shade first, which is this cream color of the building, and then I move on to the cement of the ground, and keeping within the warm tones, I go in with the bright yellow elements of the building. And at this stage, I'm just laying down flat washes. I'm not really concerned about shading or anything like that. Basically to save myself from having to change out my brush cleaning water as frequently, I generally try to paint within the same color families in succession as much as possible. So in this case, I decided to go with warm tones first, and then after that I moved to the cool tones afterwards, and then lastly I painted in the figures. Even though the boys here are mainly pink, which would have been part of the warm tone family, but I left them for last because they are part of the foreground. So in this case, I find with gouache, it's good to focus on the background elements first and then do the foreground stuff because even if I'm as careful as possible, I'm likely going to end up painting, accidentally painting over things on the foreground elements. So I find that it just makes more sense to do the background first and then do the foreground things last. In these early stages of the painting, I like to mix the paint with a fair amount of water, not only because I need to reactivate the dry paints, but also to establish colors and values without committing to them too heavily. The reason I say this is because if you layer too much thick gouache paint, like early on, there is the threat of it cracking as it dries if you applied it too thick. And since I'm the type of painter that likes to work in a lot of layers, I try to keep these early layers very thin and diluted. And honestly, in general, my preferred painting style is quite flat. I don't, I'm not the type of painter that likes a lot of texture. So that is also another reason why you'll see that a lot of the mixtures that you'll um, watch me, you know, paint with are quite watered down. So I think one of my most commonly asked questions in regards to gouache is color and paint mixing. Admittedly, this is a very difficult topic for me to discuss because a lot of what my process is, is quite intuitive and trial and error. But something that I think is pretty vital to my painting process is getting 
all those flat washes of color down on all of the elements to start, I find that makes a big difference. And I know some people prefer to work on one element at a time, like from start to finish. But for me, I prefer to slowly chip away at everything and bounce around from thing to thing. And the reason for that is because the values and colors will be affected by what is directly next to it and surrounding it. And so it's easier for me to gauge if I'm on the right track when it comes to the hue or the value when it's next to an actual color as opposed to being the white of the paper. And so that's why even though, like I said earlier, that I prefer to leave the foreground elements last more or less um, so that I'm not worrying about painting over it. I do here, as you can see, I do end up painting at least like one flat wash of color over them again, just so that I can get a sense of the colors and how they look next to next to everything. And so I do this first kind of really messy wash of pink um, and their hair colors first, but then when it comes to actually the final rendering of them, I leave them last. Something that I do think is really beneficial in being able to mix paint is understanding the basics of color theory. You definitely don't need to be an expert, but I think that if you know just the fundamentals, it will help you a lot in the long run. Basically, if you have access to a color wheel or you can just look up a color wheel, I think that will help you a lot. So for example, all of these cream colored elements in the building, initially our brain might think that the shadow color for cream would be a tan or a light brown. But in reality, when you look at the screenshot, a lot of these elements actually lean a little bit more green, which is likely due to the blue of the sky interacting with the shadows. So if we apply some color theory here, the base color of this cream building is basically yellow. And to make it more green, we add a little bit of blue. And then upon further observation, I can see that the shadows that are directly under this yellow overhang do actually lean a little bit warmer due to the shadows interacting with that yellow. So in these cases, I do end up mixing in some more tan slash brown colors. And yeah, I find that paying attention to these subtle differences really make the piece feel more dynamic and just really bring it to life. But I will say how far you want to render something is totally up to you. This is where your artistic liberties will come into play. So for me, when approaching a study that is from real life, my goal is not for perfect realism, but rather just to get an understanding of how color, value, and composition affect the overall still or frame. I find that when I do these studies, I always end up learning something along the way. And that's kind of the goal that I have in mind as opposed to trying to make it look exactly like the screenshot that I'm referencing from. So when it comes to things like what was happening behind the figures or the minute details of the concrete, I figured those things were really not important. So I simplified them significantly. For example, with the background area directly behind all of the members, I decided to I just decided to go with a gradient that went from like a dark blue to a greenish brown that would kind of blend into the concrete. And for this area, the important thing here is to make sure that it's dark enough so that the viewers know it's in shadow and kind of pushed back into the distance. And as well, making sure that the value is dark also allows for the figures to stand out more for that nice contrast because while the kind of the yellow building and the persona sign are kind of the highlights of this, the members here are also the kind of secondary focal point of the frame or the composition as well. And so for me, that's more important is making sure that they stand out against this, uh, you know, fairly busy kind of background. And another thing with painting with gouache is don't be afraid to be a little bit bolder with your color choices. 
I know that a lot of people express like a feeling of intimidation or fear when using gouache, but the huge benefit of this medium is that it's opaque. So you can always paint over an area if you make a mistake or want to change something. So for me, I think that kind of adopting a philosophy of kind of almost exaggerating the colors or the values when you're going into it is better. And then that way, you know, I find that in the end, it usually ends up paying off. Because like I mentioned earlier, colors and values will look different depending on what is surrounding it. So while certain elements might look too drastic at first, once you start laying in the other elements around it, I find it often comes together. Having good contrast between values, I think is very important when you want to give something dimension and overall just make the piece feel more dynamic. And maybe this is too late, but I think, I guess it might be worth mentioning. When I say values, value is in terms of something that's light versus something that's dark. And then when I'm talking about hue, that means the actual, um, the actual color. So if you find that you're having a hard time getting the exact colors right, like the hue of the color, Focus more on the values and I find that will make the piece more successful regardless of the hue or the color. I know that might sound confusing, but basically if you are struggling with color, focus on value first. This is why oftentimes in art classes, teachers often get their students to work in grayscale or black and white first, because once you get the hang of that, then you can move on to color. But that being said, color and hue are still important. And I do find that it does come into play quite a bit with this piece, particularly, particularly on all the shades of pink on the members' outfits. Something that I love about the styling of the members here is that they're all dressed slightly different from one another, but they all feel cohesive in the types of garments and of course the pink color palette. And the common paint color that I used of course was magenta, but then depending on what I saw in the screenshot, some pieces I mixed in a lot of white and a little bit of purple for those near white shirts. And then some elements I mixed in with some yellow or orange for the items that leaned a little bit more peach. So yeah, basically from here, I just continue to build up those colors and values layer by layer. And I begin adding in some of the more minute details that I do think are important to the piece, like the kind of ridges in the yellow parts of the building here. But yeah, other than that, there isn't really much else I can say about the painting process specifically at this point, which brings me to why I chose this screenshot to do a painting study from. So for those of you who are familiar with my channel and my work, you'll know that I have been doing screenshot recreations for a while now. Initially, it started out as a challenge over on Instagram where people were recreating their favorite screenshot from animated TV shows in their own style. And so of course I had to participate starting out with some of my favorite animes like Sailor Moon, Card Country Sakura, Howl's Moving Castle. And then I moved on to non-anime animated movies like Klaus and Mulan. And then from there I thought, why not give a real movie still a shot like Batman Returns? And so when I pick a screenshot to recreate, I always want to choose something that of course I am personally a fan of, but also something that I find visually and creatively interesting. Because like I mentioned earlier, I treat these as a learning experience while also being fun because it's just a study and it's something that I am a fan of. And so when it came to TV shows and movies, that made a lot of sense to me because that is something that I gain a lot of inspiration from. And a lot of the things that I would pick were things that I had a lot of nostalgia for or something that I grew up with. But yeah, just in the spirit of trying something different, trying something new, I thought, why not do a music video? And as some of you might know, I have fallen down the BTS rabbit hole the past little while. And while I am a really big fan of them now, I also do find that, yeah, their music videos and the visuals to be really appealing and creatively interesting. 
which really probably comes to no surprise because the K-pop industry in general really puts a lot of emphasis on their music videos and invests a lot of money and effort into them. And while there are so many great music videos to choose from, from BTS, I knew pretty quickly that I wanted to pick something from the Boy With Love video because the vibrant colors and set pieces really speak to my ultra feminine aesthetics. For those of you who are familiar with my work, I'm definitely someone who loves lots of bold colors. I love pastels and my work overall is quite feminine. And I will say I was torn between this screenshot and another one that had a nighttime vibe to it, which is seen towards the end of the music video. But for sure, I knew that I wanted to pick something that was in front of this building because that big persona sign is really iconic to this music video. And so in the end, I did choose this daytime one because I felt like it was a very iconic scene from this music video, but also I found that having all of the members kind of with their backs facing the camera, leaning to the left, it just really makes for a much more cohesive looking composition as opposed to the nighttime scenes. It was really hard to find one where they weren't all you know, chaotically dancing around, which, you know, in the music video is adorable. But in terms of trying to find something that was going to be that would translate into a, you know, painting study, it was a little bit more difficult. So that's why I went with this one. Plus, I also just really love the color combination here of the vibrant yellow of the building, the blue of the sky, and then of course the pink outfits. I find that they just go really, really well together. And it is extremely satisfying that that shade of blue that they dyed V's hair matches so perfectly with this scene. It was very smart to have him in the center of this lineup. It really creates such a just satisfying, you know, setup here. And even when you look at the outfits too, they purposely have Jimin, Jin, and then Suga. They're all spaced out. They're the ones with like the lightest colored shirts and they're like kind of evenly spaced out as well. It's, it's all very calculated. And I think that is what's so appealing and why K-pop in general is so popular is partly that the they take the music video so seriously and everything is so calculated and really they really pay attention to the details and that's why everything is so satisfying and so visually um, interesting to watch. So I have talked a little bit about this in one of my long question and answer videos previously, but I will kind of go over it again with you in this video. But I was pretty late into getting into K-pop and BTS. I was obviously very aware of K-pop for many, many years, and I would watch the random music video here and there. And whenever I did, I fully understood the appeal in the sense that the music was catchy, the videos were on a whole nother level, and the styling was, you know, very trendy, and obviously the pop stars were incredibly unattainably beautiful. But I think because of that, my impression of it was for, you know, for a long time was that it felt very manufactured and almost too polished and perfect to the point where it just wasn't relatable. And so I never felt the need to actually get invested in it in any way. Uh, but yeah, that was until maybe a little over a year ago, I believe, when BTS did an NPR Tiny Desk concert. And for those of you who are not familiar, NPR, I believe, is like a radio station. And over on YouTube, they post these really intimate, like stripped down, sometimes acoustic mini concerts that they do with various different artists. And I've always really enjoyed these concerts because there's just something very chill and authentic feeling about them because they're so stripped down and just really, really chill. So needless to say, I was quite intrigued to see a K-pop group participate in a performance like this that, you know, didn't have all the crazy production pieces or the big setups, but, you know, rather it's just, you know, a band and some mics and they're just sitting on some stools. 
And yeah, this Tiny Desk concert performance, it really allowed me to see not only how talented these guys were, but also just their natural charisma and chemistry that they had with each other. You could really tell that they have such a good dynamic with one another and that they seem to just be having like a great time performing. And so, you know, their energy was just really infectious and obviously the music is incredibly catchy. So naturally, after watching that performance, I slowly began diving into their music videos and then you know you're trying to figure out all the members names and you're watching interviews and eventually you know you start figuring out that they have tv shows and for those of you who are really into k-pop you you know the you know the rabbit hole experience <laughs> but yeah i will say the reason why i keep saying k-pop and bts is because for the most part most of my consumption has been BTS. And I understand that obviously K-pop is a very large industry and there is, there's so many groups out there. And in a way it is kind of intimidating. I have very lightly kind of dabbled into other groups. Mainly Stray Kids is kind of the other group that I've been really enjoying, but have not ex uh, consumed nearly as much content with other groups as I have with BTS. But I've I've discussed this with other people and I think that largely uh, a big part of why BTS has such a mass appeal is because they do feel really authentic. They feel genuine in, in what they do. And I think that's why I was so captivated by them from this Tiny Desk concert specifically because it was not accompanied by these super polished music videos. That being said, I of course love all of the polished music videos and performances and that whole thing. But I think that what sets them apart and what makes them so unique is the kind of the genuine kind of authenticity that I feel when I see them in a more stripped down performance like that or in their TV shows or you know just the way that they interact with each other. Not only that but I also appreciate that they as a group seem to be able to put a lot of their own input into what the what they do creatively when it comes to writing slash producing their music as well as their music video concepts and other endeavors. I really don't imagine that is likely the case with the majority of other K-pop groups which again I think really sets BTS apart. And on a more personal note there has been something really magical about diving into BTS for me this year because as I've kind of mentioned throughout my videos, this year in particular has been quite the roller coaster for me in my personal life on top of the general pandemic fatigue that we have all been experiencing. So in becoming a fan of BTS this last little while, it has served as a really nice distraction and form of blissful escapism for me. Like I said, there is so much content out there to consume and it has been a really fun journey in, you know, discovering their huge versatile discography of music. Seriously, they hit so many different genres as well as being, you know, completely captivated by their stage pre presence, their, you know, performance abilities, the choreography, the music videos, and then Lastly, the cherry on top is just being, you know, totally sucked into their infectious dynamic with each other and their just incredibly endearing personalities. And I get that K-pop is just not going to be everyone's cup of tea, no matter how you slice it. And I totally respect that. But I think that if there's something that people are really passionate and enthusiastic about and it brings them a lot of joy and it's not harming anybody, just let them have it. Just let them have that thing. I'm at a place in my life now where I think that we need to just abandon the concept of quote unquote guilty pleasures and just unabashedly with no shame, just enjoy things without feeling guilty about it. 
I feel like life is just too short not to just, you know, relish in the things that bring you joy, whether it be, you know, K-pop, anime, or, you know, any type of interest that some people might consider to be a quote unquote guilty pleasure. And so in the spirit of being indulgent, a little while back, I did illustrate all of the BTS members, which the original paintings have now all sold. But if you're interested, I do have postcard prints of them available in my online shop, which you can grab your bias individually, or you can grab a set of all seven members together. And the link to my shop is in the description down below. And for those of you who are not BTS fans, I do also have lots of other merchandise from stickers, pouches, washi tape, prints, and originals as well. My shop will be open until November 28th or so, and then I won't be opening it again until sometime next year, just to give myself a little bit of a holiday break. So if you're interested in grabbing something from my shop, I suggest that you do it very soon. And yeah, that pretty much concludes today's video. I hope that you enjoyed hearing me ramble on and on about BTS, or at least that you were able to learn something new about painting with jelly gouache. And yeah, thank you so much for being here. And I really appreciate all of your support. And I hope that you have an amazing day or evening wherever you're at. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.